reactant. I'll just do this one in general. I'll probably also do a titration. A plus C, B goes to products. You want to think of this as two stoichiometry problems. It may or may not say the word limiting. If it does, it's a no-brainer that it's one of these. If it doesn't, you need to be given, if there is info given about A that is related to moles or can be changed to moles, and if there's info given about B that also can be changed to moles, then you have a limiting reactant problem. So you change this to moles of the product of interest, you change this to moles of the product of interest. After you do that, you pick the smaller one. The smaller numerical value uh, leads back to your limiting reactant. Okay? So the problem with this is this can be in various uh, areas. You can have a pure stoichiometry problem, which is like moles, grams, etc. That's like chapter 4 material. You can also have this, uh, let's see, it could be uh, with, uh, as a liquid, so you could have this with molarity and moles and volume. Or you could have this as a gas problem also. So you could have like volume, moles like PV equals NRT sort of moles. You have pressure, things like that. So it can come in any of those regimes because you can have reactions that are uh, working as liquids or gases or whatever. It doesn't matter, you still solve it the same way. You always convert the given info to moles and then change it to moles of the product. You do it for both reactants. So if you have two or more reactants where information is given that is related to moles, you have a limiting reactant problem. These are all usually connected to uh, a percent yield where you have the actual divided by the theoretical times 100%. So that means theoretical, this is what you calculate. Okay, theoretical, the one I just boxed right there, that's the one you calculate. Actual, that's the one that they're going to have to give you in the problem. This percent yield problem should be less than what number? Yeah, less or equal to 100, greater than, or equal to zero. Okay? It's not a number in that realm that's weird. Okay, now along with that, let's do titrations. Okay? Just kind of combo these two topics because they're really similar. Titration problems. Very connected sort of problems. You have A plus B goes to the products. Okay, and in this case, info is given about both, but one of them is not mole related. So, for example, uh, you'll be given like molarity here and volume or something like that. Can you change that to moles? Yeah, this can be changed to moles. Molarity times volume is moles. So you can change that to moles. The other one you'll have information about, uh, most likely. However, it, it might not be moles related. For example, you could have volume here. Okay? And they're asking for the molarity at the end. So what you do is you change the one that has the moles related to moles. Then you use the molar ratio. Molar ratio to get the moles of B. So this was moles of A. And then you find, uh, you know, what you want. So you find what's wanted. Uh, for example, if you have moles of B and you want molarity, you just go moles divided by volume. If you have uh, moles of B and you want mass, that's just a simple mass to grams conversion. I want to caution you, many people like to use this equation here when you're doing a titration. I would urge you not to. That's for a what kind of problem? Dilution. So it will maybe half the time work. And it usually works when there's no coefficients in front of the reactants, like they're all ones. But otherwise, just I would say it's not worth the risk. Just always do the stoichiometry method. If you use this, there's going to be times where it's not going to be right.
Okay? All right, that's titration. Oh, and I think there was a small question about molarity. So molarity is moles per liter. And let me give you the different types of molarity questions you could get. You could have, as you just saw, titration. You could have a simple molarity calculation. You could have a dilution. Dilution is M1V1 equals M2V2. Okay? Uh, those are the three main types. Okay? So if you're comfortable with those, I say you're pretty good to go. Those are the three main types of molarity questions. All right, let's put a pause on that. <laughs>